This week on Titan, the world of extreme motocross. Oh, oh, oh. One piece titanium billet foot pick. This part looks awesome. If I don't get the big challenges, how am I going to learn? Shut the piece and make out a brass. Our country was built on a foundation of American manufacturing. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. But today, we've seen millions of jobs lost and 100,000 manufacturing plants have been closed. To the Republic for which it stands. Join us as we take a stand for American manufacturing and fight to bring those jobs back home. One nation, one nation, one, one nation. nation. Under God, under God, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This industry is hidden from the general public, locked behind closed doors. Today, all of that changes. Every week on Titan, we're gonna show you great American companies that are manufacturing and doing it big right here in America. We're gonna teach advanced manufacturing techniques, and we're gonna clearly show you how to bring work back to our shores. It's time to put Americans back to work. Today, we are in Stewart, Florida, right outside of West Palm Beach. We are highlighting a company called Nahilo Concepts and entering the world of extreme motocross. It's a family business with a father, two sons, the wives, the kids, the grandkids, everybody working at the shop, just making it happen and living that American dream. A few weeks ago, I got a call from Bob. He laid down a challenge to build a one-piece titanium foot peg. This is not something that's ever been done before because machining titanium takes a long time. But today, because of the advanced technology in our industry, we are able to make it happen and at a low cost, manufactured right in California. Now we came over to Florida, we're delivering the foot pegs. It's gonna blow their minds. They're right in here. Let's go check these guys out. What is going on? What's up, Joe? Good Bobby. to see you, man. Hey, Joe, man. Good to Bob. see you. Welcome. The family business. Yeah, man. My name is Bob Brewster. I'm the owner of WMR Competition Performance here in Stewart, Florida, as well as co-owner of Nihilo Concepts with my two sons. Nihilo Concepts is a proud manufacturer of American-made goods made right here in the United States in our own shop, in our own building, with American employees, American parts, and American materials. Nihilo. Yep. Pronounced that right? Yes, yep. you did, yeah. He looks so good. You guys have an amazing company right here. Thanks. And you got CNC's in the back. Oh, yeah, baby. We're making every day. parts for bikes. Ooh. You actually started the company. Started right? making parts manually, and then I went to school for it, and now we turned into this. I heard you never left school. You're never actually left. teaching the CNC program at a local college. Yeah, it's been 10 years now. It couldn't drag me out of there, so I'm still so there, good. teaching at night. As a business owner, it's, a, it's the American dream. I'm working with my father, my brother, my wife's here. My kids come in during the week, and you couldn't ask for any more. I mean, the dog comes in some days. Thank you for what you're doing, man. Yeah. That's awesome. And then you're teaching guys here in your own shop? Yep. Bobby came in a couple years ago, and I'm teaching him, and he's taking over programming a little bit now, so it's, it's good. You know, sometimes I go to huge companies, but I love coming to places where you got the family vibe, it's where it all family starts, dynamic yeah. happening. Generations so, to come, you know? My son Joe actually owns the Hilo Concepts. He's a, a machinist by trade, and my older son Bob also works here in the shop. He's becoming a really good machinist as well. And the three of us together really make a good, uh, a good team to create some really cool stuff for the industry. When we bought one machine, we decided if we sell this many, you know, by this time period, we'll get another one. And sure enough, we yeah. did it and kept on buying machines and a machine. And Every year, boom, 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 you know, new yep. machines. You were telling me that you guys actually have some land and we a do, man. building. Yep. Yeah, we got we built a 20,000 foot building right across the street over here. Big machine shop, big dealership. Yeah. American dream. Yeah. Really, that's awesome. Well, show me around. All right, cool. Let's take a look. When we first started in Hilo, we never thought it would take off as big as it did. You know, our passion and drive for making trick parts 
really shows through and that our customers love the same things we do. It's just the, the American dream to be able to do what you love, love what you do, and make cool parts that people actually want to buy. All right, here we go, here we go. Open sesame. American titanium CNC machined. Oh, oh, oh. Holy mackerel. Boom. <laughs> oh, I love These things it. are nice. Yeah, they are, man. Do y'all like that? Oh, it's like a feather. Light. Everybody needs a set. Dana, Chris, to my office. Dana and Chris, to my office. What's up, man? Hey, how you guys doing? Good, how are hey, you? What's, what's up, man? Uh. What's up, man? What's up? Everything good? Yeah. Cool. So I got a real cool project. Nahilo Motorcycle Company. Heard of them? Dude. Titanium one piece foot peg. Sick. We're gonna make it out of 6AL4V. You do a lot of motorcycle riding, so I thought you would like to take the lead on this one. And uh, I think I'm just gonna have you uh, do like the main piece. It's pretty complicated. I'm gonna have you do the backside. Yeah. Okay? I know Dana's pretty swamped right now with the Monel parts, and he's got his hands full. So, I mean, if that's the most complicated part of the job, I want it. I think Dana is the best person to get it done. And I'll give you the second operation. Like we're gonna do the first operation over here mm -hmm. and then we'll make a Mighty Bite fixture. And then I'll just have you do the backside of it. So you're still gonna be working on it. You know I mean, I mean, I'd rather do the hardest part, challenge myself. Pretty busy with that Monel part. You already have a program though, right? Most of it, I got a lot of work. Yeah, if I don't get the big challenges, how am I gonna learn? I think you should give them the challenge. You don't wanna do it? Well, I want to do it, but like I said, I'm I'm pretty busy with other stuff. Yeah. If I give you this this job, you need to like make it happen. Mm -hmm. Finishing them is not good enough. Like you have to finish them, and you got to do it efficiently, so we can actually sell these things at a competitive price. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is not an easy job. I think you and I help him out a bit. He can he can handle it. And then you'll do the backside. Yeah, I do the backside. Okay. All right, so we'll do it on the UMC 750, the five axis. Mm -hmm. I'll work with you on it, but this might call for some weekend work, you know what I mean? So we gotta yeah. make it happen. Whatever it takes. All right, guys, cool. Oh, thanks, man. Oh. Next on Titan. This has never been done before. Never seen anything like that. Your tools snap right on impact. Thanks for watching this free episode of Titans of CNC. If you love what we're doing, please subscribe to our YouTube channel below. And if you want to learn this trade for free, go to academy.titansofcnc.com and we'll learn it together and take it all to another level. Boom. So I fought real hard to get this job. It's a real difficult part, and they didn't want to give it to me. They wanted to give it to Dana because he's the more experienced guy, but I fought for it. I want the most challenging parts. I believe I can program anything in the shop. We're using a dovetail vise on the fifth axis. In order for our material to fit perfectly in that, we have to actually cut dovetails first onto the stock material. So Johnny's gonna do that right now. He's gonna put it on the VF2. So Chris is programming a one-piece titanium foot peg for Nahilo Concepts. In motocross, this has never been done before, making one piece out of titanium. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a small dovetail inside the material. We're just gonna kiss the sides of the material and kiss the top, just to get rid of the scaling to ensure that we have a perfect 90. So when we cut the 30 degrees in the material and the 30 degrees on the jaw, it goes in there at a perfect angle. It's like an anchor and it cannot move down, up, out, or in. So we are only 45,000 holding onto this part. But since we have that third degree in there, it is rigid. We can cut the part in almost one shot. So first things first, I'm using this IPT7 MCO NMO. It's great for roughing, finishing, anything titanium. We're gonna machine the titanium with coolant, but we're also 
gonna machine an aluminum piece for the viewers so you can see it without coolant and see the cutter actually cutting the material so you can see exactly how we have it programmed. One thing with titanium, you don't want sharp tool paths. So right here, I'm just getting the back roughed out. It's gonna flip over in the UMC 750. It's gonna get the other side roughed out. When we have separate tool paths, it'll give us different colors just to show like the new material that we're touching. So it's really helpful. One key thing I gotta do is make sure that the coolant is getting everywhere. Now I'm gonna come in with a 620 through spindle cooling drill. It's gonna go right down non-stop, get the material out. Right here we gotta rough out the pockets. You don't want sharp corners with titanium because your tool will snap right on impact. Rigidity is real hard to keep. So I chose to do the inside of these first and then get this outside shape done after. Now that we got all of that material out on the underside on those thin walls, now I'm gonna come out and do the outside. We got all the material roughed out on the outside, now we're gonna come in with the finisher and finish off the radius on the end. I used a ball limo to rough out all these spikes. So right now I'm gonna use this 40 degree tapered Imco end mill, custom made for this job, custom made for titanium. What this tool is gonna do is it's gonna weave in and out of these spikes and it's gonna cut on the inside, get that floor radius. At the same time, it's gonna be doing the spikes on the ends with the outer part of this tool. We got the program done. Everything looks great. I finished the profile on the part, and right now the finish isn't great. So this is a surface roughness gauge, and what we do is we use it to check the surface finish while the part's in the machine. So right now we're at about a 125 surface finish. We wanna be below a 63. We'll go down to a 10 or a 16 just because we want it as perfect as possible. So right now I'm gonna go talk to my dad and see what we can do to make the surface finish better. Part looks awesome. Yeah, it's good. So yeah, I agree. It's probably like a 125 right there. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and look at your speeds and fees, double check your chip load, your surface footage, and uh, let's just get it a little bit more perfect and we'll be good. Cool. All right? Yeah. So the chatter actually comes because the spindle rate is too high for the feed rate, mm -hmm. right? The spindle is spinning and it's actually bouncing the tool on the material. Yeah. I can just hold it right here and it's like I can feel that vibration. You know? So you actually create the pressure to push a little bit harder, mm -hmm. which that added pressure stops the vibration. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It actually yeah. gives you a better finish. So I think I think it's coming out really good. And right now it's just kissing it. It's so good. Yeah. So it looks like you got a few more passes. So go ahead and um, bring it in. Let me see it. But I think you're going to be good. Cool. All right? All right, cool. Thanks. We want to hold our parts to as perfect a service finish as possible because every time our customer opens the box and sees our parts, we want to wow them every single time. Next on Titan. My favorite part of machining. Chef piece and make out a brass. It's like a bear trap. Run them. Yeah. Right. Hey, what's up, Sean? What's up? Hey, you got a minute? I got to yeah. get the titanium foot peg ready. So Chris brought me his first stop. Now that we have the part in here, we're gonna use the profilometer. So the way the profilometer works is it drags a teeny tiny needle over the top of the part and it checks for deviations in its topography. In other words, this metal surface looks nice and shiny and flat, but in reality, it's got all these little peaks and valleys in it. 
So now that I've verified that our surface finish is beautiful, I'll just check a couple things with my CMM and a caliper, and we'll call it good. Yo, Gilroy. Yo. All right, she looks good. I know you were concerned about the surface finish, and I'm pulling a 7.3. Man, that's good. Micro inches. That's what we so, like. Yeah, I like it. I say run them. Appreciate it. All right, so my son Chris just finished the first operation for the one-piece titanium foot peg. He did an awesome job spinning it around, cutting everything out. This is my favorite part of machining, the fixturing, the tooling, the designing. We have to look at it, and we got to figure out the best way to hold a complex part so you don't crush it, so it can't yank out, and so it's nice and rigid so we can go to town machining the rest of the part, bringing the part to completion. Bam. We just took a block of aluminum. We did a little railroad track right here the exact feature machined into the part. So it just clicks right inside, locks in place already. It can't go anywhere. I went to the Mighty Bite Uniforce clamp. This is one of my favorite clamps because this bad boy right here with the angles drops right inside. And as the bolt presses down, it expands both ways. So a lot of times we use these when we have two parts We'll put this right in the center. It'll expand out and actually hold two parts with one bolt at the same time. In this particular case, I gave it a hard stop on both sides. So when you bolt down, it hits the hard stop on one side and presses into the part on the other side. So we're ready to go, nice and solid. All we're gonna do is take this bad boy right here and pop it right into the five axis. It's gonna flip around, drop down, finish it off, boom. Now that Chris finished his first stop on this titanium foot bag, we are going to flip it over using a Mighty Bite fixture. We're going to put it in the VF6 in the trunnion almost like the five axis machine. First thing I did with Autodesk Inventor is took an Imco half inch end mill, got rid of this big old chunk of material that's left. It's machining the end that will bolt on to the frame on the dirt bike. One thing I like about the Inventor software is the adaptive roughing will go and rough out all kinds of crazy contours that are tough to get to. We make a lot of different stuff here, rocket parts, race car parts, medical industry stuff. It's about time we make some dirt bike parts. I'm definitely gonna have a set of these on my own bike. The foot peg was standing up, milling that bracket out. Now it's going to rotate 90 to its side, do all the side work, finish up around where the bolt pops through, drill the hole through the part, and that's it. Part's done. Unbolt it off the fixture and you will have a complete foot peg. You can go to nihiloconcepts.com and buy them. What's up, Sean? What's up? So Dana brought me in operation two of the foot peg and it looks beautiful, but we still need to make sure that it specs out. Now this is motorsports, it's not a rocket part, but we still need to make sure that it meets the Titan America standard of excellence. So the first thing I did was bust out my calipers so I could check a couple of dimensions. I need to know how big this hole is that's going through the part, so I'll use my gauge pins for that. I mounted it on a block on my drop indicator so that I could verify the location of the through hole. Lastly, I need to make sure that all of the features installed on OP2 are orientated properly to the features already installed on OP1. I'll use the comparator for that. So what I'm doing here is making sure that this work truly is done at a 45 degree angle. 45? Well, I'm all done with it. It specs out. It's beautiful. It's a work of art. So I'm going to go out and let Dana know to hurry up and run the rest of these parts. Here you go, Dana. Hey, what's up? I like it. You like it? Yeah, good to run. Clear for takeoff? Run them. Yeah. Right. We just finished the one piece 
titanium foot peg for Nihilo Concepts. I believe in American quality and American workmanship. You need to show it right from the beginning, in the first operation, all the way to the delivery. We had Kristen come up with an amazing case to deliver the parts in. And then tomorrow, I'm flying out to Florida to Nahilo Concepts, where I'm gonna reveal the parts, and I'm gonna blow these guys' minds. We're gonna check out this amazing family business that's doing it big in the world of extreme motocross. Next on Titan. CNC's green light, green light. I was in prison, I'm an ex-convict. Something out of nothing. Oh, oh. holy mackerel. Boom. <laughs> Ooh, I love These things it. are nice. Yeah, they are, man. Do y'all like that is? Oh, it's like a sharp leather. light. They're so sharp, too. Yeah, I feel it. Like it's like a bear trap. Yeah. It is, exactly. It reminds me of that, yeah. Right. They're not going to wear down either. They're nice and strong ridge right there. Wow, man, they look so good, Titan. Nice job, so man. So good. You designed it. Wow. Yeah, but to see it in reality is really yeah, cool, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think they have some like forged ones and welded ones, yeah. right? Only the, uh, the factory teams have had them over the years, but this is to make them available to the, the regular guy that's racing out there every weekend, the fast guy that, that wants a good peg. This is uh, revolutionary. One thing in the industry that has not been done is a one-piece titanium billet foot peg. Uh, they've been out there in the industry before for the pros and people like that, but they've been out of titanium for the regular community, people here in the United States that, that race motocross at a serious level, that want to buy a peg that is state of the art. Something out of nothing. You know? That's what we do. Every day. In the American Hilo. manufacturing. <laughs> Very cool. It's awesome. That's like enough it. looking. Let's go put these things on. Sounds Ooh. good. I can't wait. Let's do it. My name is Weez and this is the shop. But let's get closer of you. I grew up in New England, Massachusetts with a, a passion for motorcycles. When I was about 10 years old, my dad let me save some money up and buy a mini bike, a lawnmower engine mini bike. I uh, loved that machine, it was a, a KG Mini. Had a little sissy bar in the back, really nice little bike, and I worked on that bike and rode it, put the wheels off it for many, many years. The KTM 50s for the kids. And this is a foam guide. If you came to the dirt bike shop and if you felt this, this is really solid because it's made out of foam. It cost, it's from 2016. It cost $449.5. Uh, $95. Well, when my kids started getting old enough to ride, we were right back in it again and started uh, enjoying the sport. And that's what brought me to this dealership and into the Nahilo Concepts uh, business, was the passion we have for motorcycling and riding. And this is the water fountain. The water fountain is for you to drink. And over there is the gear for like dirt bike racing. Here at Nahila, we're known for a lot of our bling parts and, and stylish parts, but the foot peg is one of the things that's known for the rigidity and the strength that the riders need when they're riding these bikes. Tyler, Titans here. We got these pegs. We're gonna throw these things on. Tyler, nice to meet you. how are you, man? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Excited. Good. Check these. Look at these babies. Wow. Woo. What do you think? Wow. That's nice, man. Never seen anything like that. Some of the other parts we make, like the billet clutch cover, actually has less deflection from the stock cast one. It's a much stronger structure inside and makes a better clutch feel and performance. Tyler, put those things on, see what they look like. See, bolt them up. All right. Awesome. Yeah, I hope it fits. I trust the machine. <laughs> <laughs> the KTM 65 is already a top-notch bike. The stock pegs are made out of cast steel. This peg is made out of 6AL 4V titanium. Same stuff using rockets. It's incredibly light, strong. It's actually two ounces lighter than the stock peg. I think it's light, huh? Oh, yeah and it'll hold up to the racing needs of amateurs and pros. This thing's it's gonna tear some boots up. We've known Titan for a while now, and us making motorcycle parts and him making aerospace parts, his expertise in the titanium field, we really felt like this is a beautiful part he could make to really top this piece off. Team Titan really killed it on this piece. The fit and finish is bar none, and I know our customers are gonna love this piece. Yeah, it looks good. Wow. Perfect. Nihilo is American built. Boom. I'm Bobby Brewster, head machinist at Nihilo Concepts. I've raced motocross for many years, so this is my niche, and making dirt bike parts is awesome. Here at Nihilo, we have a passion for innovation. I just love what I do here. I've been doing this for about four or five years now. 
So this Titan, this was our first machine. Wait, 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 wait. CNC's, green light, green light, green light. Making it happen, one operator. <laughs> Woo! Making parts every day, baby. That's so good, man. <laughs> I love that sound. Next on Titan. Now we have five machines shoved into a very small space. Manufacturing is coming back. Are you kidding me right now? Yeah, man. Both right on. Here at Nihilo Concepts, we've experienced unbelievable growth over the last couple of years. We started out with one machine in a very small room. Now we have five machines shoved into a very small space. We can't fit any more machines in, and we're maxed out every single day making parts. So Titan, this was our first machine, a little uh, mini mill, and now we got a whole shop full of machines. Making parts nonstop. And what's going on over here, BF2SS? Yeah, BF2SS, the bread and butter, that's where yeah. everything is. Yes. You'll notice my granddaughter's name, Ella Grace. She was born the same day this, this machine came to the shop. That's so awesome. That kind of makes us think about our little baby, you know? Oh yeah, then, that's what you're doing it all for, that's right? It's all for the family, that's right. The exciting part about manufacturing and CNC machining nowadays is I know that we're only scratching the surface. Everybody in the machining manufacturing industry, we're all one big family speaking the same language. We gotta reach out and grab that technology and the advancement, learn it, and keep on pushing through this and make America great again. So you're taking this block right here from yep. this pallet. We're making that piece. Making something from nothing. That's right, man. Right? That's Coming out with this, yep. anodize it, ship it worldwide. Worldwide. Right here from Florida. That's it, baby. Woo! The name Nihilo comes from the Latin ex nihilo, creating something out of nothing. And it's faith-based, it, it brings us back to our creator. So it was a perfect name for this company and I think it's really helped us drive this business to the success we've had. So you got aluminum running over here, yep. popping off all kinds of chips. Is this your little, the brake? Yeah, it's a titanium brake tip for the new uh, KTM Husqvarna. The only one of its kind in the industry. No one else makes this piece but us. So you're just taking raw titanium, Yep. Making first, this bad boy. Yeah, first operation. By the time you get down with second operation, you got that guy right there. Oh, nice. We engrave our name Boom. on the front and the side. Then it hooks right to your bike. Yeah, man. Hooks right on. <laughs> I feel absolutely blessed to be able to come to work every day and be surrounded by my family. My brother, my dad, my mother's here, my wife, my daughter, my son, Reese. <laughs> this is what it's all about. American manufacturing supports American families. Hey, Titan, this is Tyler, one of our operators. Tyler, making all the noise over there. Yes, sir, it's what I do all day. Popping off some chips. Check this out, Titan. We do a special extrusion for these, for these parts. You notice how this part fits on here, just like this. So there's no waste, no extra material being thrown the, the awesome. chip in, you know? So then all these guys are just going in here, getting yep. machined. Boom, boom, boom. And coming out just we make, like this. We make like four or five parts, very similar shape, that all fit the same extrusion. So how long have you been machining? I've been machining for about a year and a half now. And you're already on the CNC's? Already on the CNC's. How do you like it? I enjoy it. I went to college for a computer degree, so it okay. kind of mixes my mechanical and computer skills. Since you're on the machine, I just learn as much as you can, take notes, Look at like the speeds and fees, like a half inch end mill. You see it every day. Every day. What's he running it at? Check it out. Ask him, you know, what, what depth of cut? How deep? Write it down in your book. You bank that information, right? Mm -hmm. And then as soon as these guys are busier because the company's growing, if you don't have an opportunity to program and do different things, learn it, show them that you can do it, and then perfect it. I was always a better mechanic technician in working on the bikes than I was at, at riding them. Uh, I enjoyed riding them and I had a passion for riding, but working on them, making them better, fixing them when they were broken, coming up with other parts that were uh, needed, that was my real passion. And that stayed with me throughout my whole entire career. And then when you, when you look at your boss, I guess you got three of them, right? <laughs> yeah. That's Sometimes bad. I don't know which is which. I would hate that, but I'm just kidding. <laughs> but when you, when you show them your part, that's your workmanship. Tyler touches every piece that we sell with his bare hands at any given yeah, point. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Well, you got a great opportunity here, man, so just keep keep it up and... Yes, sir. Boom. I'm learning a lot. Boom! Boom! <laughs> awesome, great work. Very nice to meet you, huh? Very nice to meet you. Keep it up, huh? Place goes and goes and goes. Yeah, old tunnels. Next on Titan. Hard scrap that are $25,000 for one. My first time on a bike. My journey to the American dream. I'm a little intimidated. What an amazing journey. I flew into Florida looking for the American dream and I have not been disappointed. Nahilo Concepts 
an American family making American-built parts, living the American dream. The parts are assembled, everything worked out perfect. We're getting ready to go out to the track and have some fun. But before, I wanted to take you on another journey over to Grand Prairie, Texas, where a few weeks ago, I spoke at an industrial college, Lincoln Tech. They have an incredible CNC program, and I got to talk to the students about my journey to the American dream. Back in the day, I had a gentleman named Jeff Weaver. He was a machinist. He worked on my night shift, and he ended up being my sole investor that helped me start my own machine shop. Jeff is retired now. He lives down the road from Lincoln Tech in Texas in a beautiful house that he purchased with the money from the investment that he made in my company. I got to see Jeff again. I got to talk to his students. It was just an amazing time. So let's go back to Texas and check it out. How many of you guys have gone through some kind of hardship where you're not sure where life's like headed or you think like you screwed up so bad that you can't get back? I was in solitary confinement and I thought my life was over. I would never see my kids again. My life has gone a crazy route. But there's a story here, you know what I mean? How this all came. I remember what I went through. Rick. Titan. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, welcome to Lincoln College's Technology, Grand Prairie, Texas. Advanced Technology. Advanced right Technology. Right here in Texas. I just jumped at the opportunity to come to Lincoln and showing our students how they can take a, a, a thought or an idea and they can actually turn that into a part that they can put in their hands. This is what we're looking for, guys who know technology, who know how to machine, who know uh, tooling and fixturing. And this is what we need in our companies. This is what we're missing. And they're getting their start right here at Lincoln. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yep. Show me around. All right, let's go. All right. To get my first floor machine, I put a quote out for $300,000 and I got denied on my credit. But I knew like I knew like I knew something was gonna happen. And this is where Jeff comes in. He knew I was trying to like make it happen. He's like, Titan, I wanna invest. Come over here. Come over here, Jeff. This guy came to me and, he, and all he had in the world it was like, do you mind me saying? Okay. Like $46,000, $47,000. His parents had just passed. It's all he had besides his house. And he said, Titan, I want to give that to you. Titan, as you can see right over here, we have a, an HVAC classroom. Students in there learning all about HVAC technology. Over here, we have a computer labs. We're placing about 85% of students that come through here. They're dedicated, they're here every day, they're working hard. They're really learning the whole program from start to finish. I was in prison, I was in lockdown, I'm an ex-convict, and this guy is coming to me. There's nothing generous about it. That's what Titan was talking about, character. It comes back. I knew his past but I also knew his character, his integrity, and his devotion to his faith. And I'd seen that for years, and I felt that was a better investment than anything I could ever do. I invested in someone I had complete confidence in. He refinanced his house and took out 70-something more thousand dollars, and I spent it like that. <laughs> True story. Jeff worked with me, alongside me, for two years. I put a couch in there, I put a TV, my family would come. We'd sleep day and night just trying to make parts. Who has any type of questions? Anything. What's up? Talk about um, running really fast parts and, and you're not breaking tools. What was your biggest, uh, most expensive mistake? I'm trying to figure that out. <laughs> Coming out of nine years active duty Air Force, and the biggest challenge for me was finding what I was going to do. and. Uh, learning to program, learning the machines, actually being able to cut different types of metal on here was probably the coolest thing ever and seeing stuff from a raw material and become parts 
was, was phenomenal. I've seen parts scrapped that are $25,000 for one. You know what I mean? These aerospace parts, and there's no going back, you know? There's no going back. I've gotten good at just double checking super quick. You gotta double check everything, and because anything can happen, and you fly so fast, you know? So fly fast while you're double checking things and stuff. Ooh, I love it. All these CNC machines right here. Yeah, so we have uh, 10 CNC machines. We got four tool room lays right here, the TL1s. Students right here are working on a really cool project, a chess piece they make out of brass. Awesome. We have four TM1 mills, tool room mills with probing capabilities. We even have a three axis uh, live tooling lathe. You guys are using not just the small mills and lathes, but you're actually using real machines that make crazy parts. And these are the machines that they're gonna be using when they go to big companies. Absolutely. Where I am from, there's a lot of gangs, there's a lot of drug dealing. Not many people can get out of there and live a successful life. Now that I have opportunity, I'm taking every advantage I can and show my family that I can do something with my life. So what made you want to get into American manufacturing? Actually, my brother went to this program. He kind of pushed me to get in here after I got out of the military. Awesome. And, uh, so you're in the military? Yes, sir. That's awesome. Thank you for your service, You're man. welcome, sir. So your brother actually went to this facility and graduated. Is he working? Yes, sir. He's actually working at a, uh, at a big aerospace company. And you're going to follow right in that footsteps. That's the plan. You guys actually started this program for the vets. Right after World War II, our veterans were coming back from overseas. They needed jobs. They needed careers. They needed a way to support their family. That's why Lincoln started. We started with just an HVAC program in one campus. Now we're 38 campuses across the country. It's awesome. And we're proud to have our vets. I'm actually a veteran myself, so I'm glad to have these guys here and the opportunity to just train them up and give them a skill they can use forever. So that's awesome because you guys are giving the skills to these guys when they're coming out so that they can actually get a job and support their families and just go after the American dream. That's the least we could do. Absolutely, absolutely. We're proud to do it. Awesome, man. Very nice meeting you, man. Very Keep nice meeting you. Good luck, huh? Yes, sir. All right, man. Thank you, sir. But just to be able to meet him was phenomenal, and I really hope that I can continue to take that and pay homage to the American tradition of, of success, you know, the American dream. I'm excited to make parts right here in America. Boom. Boom. The way you carry yourself matters. The, what you do in life matters. The integrity that you have matters. Just because you made mistakes in the past doesn't mean that you're chain locked to those mistakes. You guys have an opportunity here to solve your customers' problems. Push the limits, get your feed times down, deliver a quality part on time. Manufacturing is coming back and it's gonna need its workers. Lincoln Tech, yeah! As an instructor, it's great to have a guy like Titan come in to share with my students, many of which I know have, have the same type of struggles, have had the same type of background. They have the same opportunities. They can move up and own their own shops or do whatever their, their dream may be. Next on Titan. Well, I hear you fly off those jumps. <laughs> this kid is awesome. There you go. So you're gonna ride the whole track or just part of it? Yes. Um, this is the neck it. that your son was talking exactly. about. Exactly. Yeah. Hey guys, what's going on, man? Todd, what's going on? Titan? Hey, nice Todd, to meet you. Todd, nice to meet you, man. Son, Dax. Ooh, nice Thank to you meet you. Meet you. you too. I hear you fly off those jumps. <laughs> How old are you? Uh, not ten. Not ten, ten, ten years ten. old now? That is amazing. How long have you been racing? Since you're five. Five. Yep. Since you're five years old. I've never been on one of these things. I might get on one by the end of the day, but I, ain't, I can't go on none of those jumps. <laughs> Not many show. things I'm scared of, but I'm a little intimidated, so I'm gonna enjoy watching you. What do you think about this titanium foot peg we made? Man, this thing's pretty sick. Yeah. Yeah, they look really good, and they look, I love the way they're machined out. Yeah. One yeah, piece. Yeah. And they have different grades of titanium, so that's like the best grade, the 604B. That's what they, they put the same uh, titanium on the rockets that we build all the parts for that go up to the space station. So we need to be running like a rocket. <laughs> Blasting off. That's right. It's so baby. good. He does anyway. And you're the guy that's going to say whether it is good or not good. I'm doing All right, you going to test it out? I will. Get geared awesome. up. My name's Daxon Bennett. I've been racing for five years, and I'm 10 years old.
my bike, it's the mod bike, and it's really, really fast. Are you kidding me right now? The kid is awesome. I don't even want to get on a bike right now. Those foot pegs, they won't break. They're really, they're awesome. How about those foot pegs, those titanium foot yeah. pegs? Look, oh, yeah, they're, they're right. blinging when you come over those. When you whip it, I'm like, dang, look at them foot pegs. <laughs> I like riding because it's real fun and you just feel free. God gave me a talent and I love racing. My first time on a bike. I didn't have a dad, so I didn't have anybody to teach me nothing. Today's the day, babe. So the clutch is in when you first start it? You, you don't, don't have, have to. to. It's in neutral, you'll be good. Shows for the show. Next on Titan. We went like, hey, yeah. like a little bit. I was like, oh. It's tricky, it's a lot harder than people think, you know? I'll be shipping a bike next week to him, he'll be buying bikes. Now he's getting it, look at him go now. Getting all cocky. Looks a lot faster than he is. Looks good though, I'm amazed. He's a really good job, Titan. Beginning, the dirt was weird. Oh, yeah, man. And then I was like, you know, still getting used to this. Yeah. And I don't even heard, like, what are the jumps? I actually went, like, eh, yeah. like a little bit. I was like, whoa. It's a tough sport. You know, I'll it's try I'll try anything. Yeah, you're but you, you just got to do it. A, a, I feel like, you know, a couple more days, a yeah. couple more days. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you, man, most guys won't even come out here. Uh, yeah. yeah, first time. They Especially the first time. They Especially on TV out. when <laughs> everybody thinks watching. you can do everything. We have a lot of riders that, that come here and they'll ride the Pee Wee track as adults because they won't come out here and try this. So you, did. Yeah. you did good, man. You did good. What an incredible it's been, day. It has been, man. Unbelievable. Woo! And you guys do this all the time. <laughs> yeah, all the time. Every weekend. Man, that's slamming over those jumps. Yeah, some that was incredible. You guys have such an amazing company, amazing family. Thanks, man. You guys do this every day. You're manufacturing parts in America, shipping them worldwide. Worldwide, all over the world. You know, sponsoring riders, yeah. you know, taking care of your employees, building bigger and better companies. The American dream, baby. Ooh. Every single day, you know. Only in America is something like this possible. You know? you know, I truly believe the American dream is real. I think we can all accomplish it if we work hard, put in our time, be the first guy there, last one to leave, have a passion for what you do in life. I love what I do. I enjoy it every single day. Whether it's making a part and machine, come from inception to completion, the American dream is real. Work hard, put your family together, make sure everybody's involved in the process. And I, I can't believe I, the job you did on those pegs. You brought them over here, man. Opened the case was like, they, they glowed, you know? Unbelievable. Oh, oh. oh, you know what? It was teamwork. My son Chris, Dana, Stuart, all the guys at the shop, they all chipped in. They all wanted to come, but yeah, you know, I'm spoiled. All. I gotta come over <laughs> exactly. here and do the show and stuff. Exactly. But, uh, Thanks for the opportunity. Great relationship. We built the relationship even stronger now. Now we're oh. buds forever, you know? You used to see me on TV all the time, and now and we're, like, not. making parts <laughs> exactly. together. You're like, he's the real deal. Yeah, man, you are the real deal for sure. Oh, thanks, That's man. It's so awesome like meeting you. Hey, man. Thanks mm. for everything. You're awesome, bud. Thank you so much. Mm. American Bill. Yep. Nahilo Concepts right here in Florida, laying it down for this great country. That's it, man. Boom! Boom. Woo-hoo-hoo, you saw that, you saw that. We're out. That was good, that was good bud. For Nihilo, what is it, Nihilo? Be one with the machine, Chris. A man, yeah. Man. Nihilo. Yeah. Nihilo. Yeah. Nihilo. Donde esta? El footpeg. Woo! Ah, one more time, one more time. Right now, I mean, 
use this, son. Yeah, 40 degrees. You're on TV, don't screw it up. <laughs> Boom. Boom. That was pretty good, huh?